Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and it is Sunday, so we're talking about doing another plugin, as I often like to do. Behind me, I have uh, some wire, which is another project I have in mind, but you'll hear more about that later. For now, I would like to zoom over and introduce you to Ultrasonic. As you can see, there are no controls on this. Ultrasonic is a plugin that you can't see because there's no controls on it. It's one of those featureless ones. Makes it very simple to implement. Technically, you also can't hear it. And I'll tell you why. I was hearing about um, various other plugins for this purpose, and I thought it might be nice to throw one of mine into the mix so that people can have it for free to download and use audio unit VST for Mac, Windows, and Linux, and the source code and all. But also because the filters that I do aren't exactly the same as other people's filters. Now, I should point out something about this, which is this is not quite the same deal as something like Biquad or Isolator, which is a recent uh, plugin for me, because those are plugins that run inside the uh, console system. Specifically, stuff like that, like Isolator and so on, it's three stages, making it about a fifth order filter, I think, of uh, Biquad filtering, where you can sweep it down in the audio range and hear the tone of the filter, and the filter is enclosed on one side by console channel and on the other side by console bus inside the filter itself. Now, that is something that will enhance the tone of the filter, but that is also a nonlinearity. And the whole purpose of ultrasonic is if you're running at a sample rate, like in my project here, it's 96K. Any audio that is going above 20K might end up aliasing. So ultrasonic filters are for filtering out that stuff that is potentially going to give you aliasing when you do further processing. And console is nonlinear processing. Mind you, it's pretty clean, especially at high sample rates, because console is such a mellow um, distortion introducer that it's going to introduce basically the first harmonic. So essentially, on normal behavior, especially if you're not pushing it that hard, which you shouldn't be because it's, put it this way, it's not going to make a big problem, but we're going to hear right now whether it makes a change. What you're going to hear now is the ultrasonic filter. I'm glancing over here. I have uh, Logic open, and since all the tracks are selected, I can hit Engage on one of them and turn on ultrasonic all the way across the mix for every channel that it's put on. And that's every single track before Purist Console, which is, again, a nonlinearity. And before the AUXs, which have things like Capacitor or, or Interstage or MV. And also on the 2-Bus, just for good measure. So what you'll be hearing is a Air Windows mix, same one as ever. I'm going to do a new track eventually. But uh, maybe you've heard this often enough that you'll hear distinctions in it as it changes. And that's kind of the key point here. Will you hear a difference when I cut this in on all tracks and take the 96K sampled audio from all these different things? All of them are sampled at 96K. All of them have potentially legitimate content over 20K. And I'll filter out everything ultrasonic with the plugin and then continue as before. It'll be a 96K mix, but everything's getting filtered across the board. Specifically, the filter that I'm using 
is a Butterworth style filter, but instead of using three stages, I'm using five for the equivalent of a um, tenth order or so filter, something like that. It's very, very, very steep, and it's set at exactly 20K. You could use it in a 44.1K mix, it's just not going to do you a lot of good. But it'll be the same uh, 20K cutoff, whether it's a, a low sampling rate mix or 96K like this, or 192, whichever. That's what this is for, is filtering out stuff that you technically wouldn't want. And one of the things about it is it does not use the Air Windows console processing that a bunch of my other biquad filters do, because what it's doing is meant to not even be in the audible range. It is, however, still calculating everything at long double resolutions, and it is also still dithering to the the 32-bit or 64-bit um, for some of the VSTs uh, floating point bus. Let's roll it. So you'll hear when it kicks in. I think you can see where my mouse pointer is with all of these guys down here. And you'll also see this on the one that you can see blinking on. Let's give it a shot. Firstly, without ultrasonic. And again, you shouldn't hear any audible frequencies change, but it could be subtly changing aliasing behavior in the console system and in the digital mix, which is not by default being altered because by default, it is just doing a digital mix that is clean uh, 96K sampling. So it's covering the wider sample range or not. Here we go. I don't know about you, but I hear a subtle change there. Things are settling back in a way that they don't do with the more technically accurate 96K. And I'll tell you why. It's because this is running through the console system, and the console system has a very subtle nonlinearity in it as part of how it functions. Now, this would also be doing the same thing if you had distortion plugins in there. Like you would be able to throw this on and do your distortion plugin elsewhere in your mix. If you have something more complicated and uh, you're doing more processing, ultrasonic is a extremely clean digital filter. It is five stages of biquad filtering they're being calculated using long double resolution. So the way this is implemented, although it is still kind of over-processing, this is about as good as they get as far as good sounding filters, particularly since this is, as far as filter tone is concerned, this is not a phase linear filter with the ripple before and after the uh, transient response. This is a regular biquad, meaning that it is not incurring extra latency. And that could be useful as well. And it's just the number of them being stacked up that's getting you the steepness of cutoff. And yeah. That's what I've got for you this Sunday. Those of you who are really interested in aliasing, uh, I guess I just gave you something nice that didn't really qualify before. I didn't really have anything like that going on before. This will, of course, also work on other people's plugins because it is a very 
generic basic type of processing. And it is a type of processing that doesn't really exist in any of my other plugins because I don't have anything quite as steep. Even Isolator is not quite as steep as this. But I also don't have filters that are not running within the console processing, which is kind of what this is designed to make better. So technically you could throw one of these in front of Isolator if you wanted, or anything else I have going on. And it's possible I will throw this also into the starter kit, just as a sort of general toolkit thing. For people who maybe are getting going with this sort of stuff, they might not know that much about what they're doing, but you can't really hurt things with this plugin. All it does is take away everything over 20k very cleanly to try to keep you safe from aliasing issues. And for those who enjoy that sort of thing, I believe we are on to a winner here. So yeah, that's my plugin for this Sunday. I will catch up with you folks on Monday. Those of you who like uh, watching my coding streams, I'm probably going to go after that matrix reverb again because there's some stuff I want to play with and see what I can do with it. And I hope you like Ultrasonic. Mind you, you might not hear Ultrasonic because it is literally supersonic frequencies. And you shouldn't be able to take just a playback and throw it on there and hear anything change. It really should be pretty good as far as not even having a tone, not even a positive tone, just completely vanilla, blank, nothing going on. But you might find use for it in your mixes, especially if you're doing nonlinearities, especially if you're doing stuff, and especially if you're working at any higher sample rate that really lets it come into its own. Because you can make the space for not having as much aliasing by running at 96K or 192K or whatever, but you can really stomp aliasing into the ground this way. I will talk to you folks later. Oh, yeah, yeah, by the way, Patreon, blah, blah. That's how I'm still doing this kind of work. You know the drill. Also, yay, like and subscribe and hit the little bell ding, all that kind of stuff. Don't mind me. It's just, these are the, this is the world we live in. And so if you do those things, it does help because if you don't do those things, the next guy over might. And uh, I just as soon see people discover this plugin and be able to use it. It should be useful to people. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.